Both teams have had numerous injuries. At you, Hector Marinero. Hector's back. He's seen only action, action in only two of the Crunch's first seven games. And when Hector scores tonight, it will be his 500th career goal in indoor soccer. Now, this is the second meeting out of six. Two teams will face off against one another this year. Ball with the win in the first one. And that's pretty significant because these two teams kind of figured to be neck and neck the entire Competition is the number one tiebreaker. That's right. Well, Baltimore has beaten Cleveland five straight, dating back through last season. And if they go two up in this early in this season, boy, they're really in the driver's seat. So we'll see if the Baltimore Spirit can continue their hold while the Crunch tries to break that hex. We're back with the starting lineup right after this. This holiday. Tonight's game is being brought to you by the NPSL Balls of Fire, the official highlight film of the NPSL. You can see all the best action of this league by dialing 1-800-80-KICKS. Here's what the starting lineups will look like this evening. First for the visiting Baltimore Spirit, Chris Ficaro will get his first start in quite some time in goal. His back line will be veteran Tim Whitman along with second-year guy Lance Johnson. Highest score for the Spirit, Kevin Sloan will run the midfield with Chris Morgan, and Brad Smith will be the forward man. Yeah, Vaccaro back in the net. He's been out for about six games. In his absence, Joe Malia went 5-1 and one for the Spirit. The Baltimore Spirit are coached by rookie coach Dave McWilliams, a very popular player in Baltimore indoor soccer history. Over on the Cleveland side, this is how it'll look. Double O Otto Orphan goal. The old and the new on the defense. Tim Tima and Scott Schweitzer. Midfield run by Tommy Tanner and the dynamic duo of Hector Marinero and Zorn Carriage up front. That's Danny Old Double O. Familiar face back there in the Cleveland goal. The Cleveland Crunch are coached by Gary Henley. Henley in his third season with the Crunch. Sports a mark of 57 and 39. And that is a very dandy sight to see for Cleveland Crunch fans. Here are the officials for tonight's game. Terry Campbell along with Ted Gregoriolo, Gregorioli. I knew I'd miss it. And, <laughs> and Ted Wargo will be in the box. Not to be confused with Ernie D. Uh, uh, I was confused enough. There's the all-time head-to-head. You see Baltimore, the spirit with a very comfortable 8-2 lead. Zoran Karic right now is the uh, second leading scorer in the league with 52 points. He is the defending NPSL most valuable player. He set a record for points and assists last year. You know, Eddie, I think Baltimore really needs to come right out at Cleveland and test Hector's fitness early. He's been out for some time. Baltimore's beaten him five straight. I would look for Baltimore to take the pace right to him, uh, even though they're on the road. There you see uh, Brad Smith as Baltimore, dressed in red and black, will have the ball and move left to right. We're underway. It's showtime. Team and Smith in the corner over there. Brad Smith is a very welcome addition to this team coming over from Dayton. Lance Johnson will dump it into the corner. Chris Morgan, rookie player in a tangle. Tommy, stay back. Pulls off the ball nicely, and a foul is called against Scott Schweitzer. He's in his first year with the crunch. <coughs> I was saying Baltimore needs to come at them, but that's not to say they need to attack recklessly. They need to attack with a little controlled aggression. A bullet from Kevin Sloan. He'll be taking a lot of the restarts for the Spirit. He leads the league in restart goals. There's a ball ahead to Tommy Tanner. He's in a race with the veteran Whitman. Tommy Tanner from NC State. There's a pile of those Wolf Pack guys on the crunch team. Ball one away by Kevin Sloan, and the tangle continues. And you see what Tanner was trying to do there was get a restart of their own down deep, holding that ball along the boards. Here's Brad Smith, the classic target man. He shoots just wide. Smith on his own rebound to his right. Otto got a piece of it. And Tom Tanner will come away with a loose change. Plays ahead to Zorin Karic. Karic in a tangle with Lance Johnson. But it's easy to see why Baltimore leads the league in three-point goals right off the bat. Two three-pointers in the first minute. And Brad Smith last week against Buffalo got a three-pointer that won the game. The crunch restart is blocked, and then the ball knocked ahead and out of play by Barry Stitz. There's Gary Hindley. <laughs> he's saying, it's my ball, let me play. Well, he used to be a goalie, so that's why he's got the ball in his hands. 
The French with their second line out there. This is Asker Fergisevich over to Glenn Carbonera. Joined out there by Matt Gary and Andy Spencer. There's Spencer on his way, but Kyra wants to knock it down the ball free. John Perry on for the Spirit will pass to Barry Stitz. Seeing the second liners in now, though Zorn Carriage still on the crunch. Matt Gary out of Penn State University is knocked off the ball. Here we see the scramble. And look at Vaccaro outside the box. Lucky he didn't handle that ball. Andy Spencer with a try. Carriage hit it from long range. It's blocked and then cleared off to the yellow line. This is Carbonera. Line of veteran defender. Andy Spencer to Matt Gary, a developmental player for the crunch. Gary started the last game for Cleveland, a win over the Kansas City attack. The crunch on a three-game winning streak. Long ball by Arfinson to the mitts of Vaccaro. Crunch have won three straight, the Spirit two straight. And Cleveland going to drop back to half field here. Let Baltimore come at it a little bit early, probably to save Hector's legs. That's Smith back hill. Whitman left footer. He misses wide. Andy Schmitz on the rebound. He'll play it up the boards. He doesn't get past Smith. Brad tries to split two, and then it gets knocked out of play. That's going to be Baltimore's ball. Yeah, we mentioned Baltimore leads the league in three-pointers with 11. Kevin Sloan has five of those three-pointers. The other guy, John Perry, with three of them. Sloan's on the ball. Actually, it's going to be Perry now. And they look to set each other for these three-pointers off the restart. John Perry, a left footer. He cracked it out. He got both hands up the top to the far corner. Jason Dieter, a Baltimore native. Gets the ball back to Kevin Sloan. Sloan last year scored 90 points in only 28 games for the Dayton Dynamo. He gets it up, and it's left to Perry off the boards. Stopped by Trudisevich, and Oscar will play in this space. And Gutierrez, another NC State Wolfpack boy. Gutierrez stops the ball outside. Right. And the crunch will reset in their own end. Yeah, Gutierrez probably has an early lead on the rookie of the year honors 30 points in only seven games quite a start he had a hat trick the last time out for the crunch in the dynamic duo's absence I think the first time in I can't even recall how long they went without one of those guys in the lineup here's Marinero now he's marked by Brad Smith and the crunch will play it back one of the things Dave McWilliams is very concerned about is getting five guys behind the ball tonight, not letting Otto Warf get that quick release downfield where uh, Zoran Carriage can go one-on-one -on -one and then get some help. And the other thing you can do is front Otto so he can't get that quick release. Put a man in front of him and not allow him to throw that ball long. Chris Vaccaro out of Camden, New Jersey, 15-year veteran. He's also the assistant coach for Dave McWilliams. Tangle along the boards, and uh, the foul will be called against Tim Tima. Baltimore will move it ahead. This is Steve Boardman. Now Sloan. He'll go one-on-one -on -one with Tanner. Tommy cuts him off. Double-team help from Marinero, and it's back to Boardman. Very consistent player in the back line for the Spirit, Steve Boardman. That's funny, Boardman was actually with Detroit in 90, then went to Baltimore in 91, back to Detroit in 92, and here he is back with Baltimore. There's that long outlet we were talking about, and Vicaro was able to get his arms above the head of Marinero. Now Carriage will hold off Barry Stitz. And a foul call against it. Zorn Carriage uh, was one of the, I think, five guys who has been ejected from the game so far this year. There's a shot by Marinero. It's off the post because Vicaro got a piece of it. There's where you see the impact of Hector off the restarts. Baltimore, 13 restart goals. Cleveland, only eight. Cleveland usually the league leader in restart goals, and that's where Hector really makes a difference with Z off those restarts. And we saw Tim. Look at it again, just a one-timer by Hector, and a nice save to get down Vaccaro just off the near post. Boy, it looks like he hasn't missed a beat. Free kick for the Spirit. There's Chris Vaccaro, will be started by Tim Whitman. Was drafted right out of high school. He's been playing 13 years. A left footer attempt by Lance Johnson. Nothing doing there. The long outlet carriage in a race with Stitz, and it's going to bounce on to Picaro. Yeah, it looks like Stitz got his hands on Zorin that time. The football event pass interference. Here is Lance Johnson. Smith with the moves. He makes a three pointer. Schweitzer stuck right in with him. Lance Johnson from Camden, New Jersey, as well. 
24-year-old on his way. His shot bounces up to the corner. Whitman's restart. Goes out of play, and we're going to take a break. We are early in the game. The crunch in the spirit are scoreless. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Even soccer players need air time, and they need all the time they can get. It's a scoreless draw early in the game, and so far, Art, surprisingly, the Crunch have not come out and really attacked the Spirit. Yeah, well, they're playing a little bit cautious. When you've lost five games in a row to a team, you're going to be... And, you know, the first quarter has been Cleveland's worst quarter. They've been outscored 16 to 23. You know, it's the only quarter they've been outscored in out of the four quarters. There you see Zorn, Carriage with 52 points. He had a cycle against Baltimore in the 18-17 Spirit win over the Crunch on November 5th. A cycle for the unfamiliar. That's a three-point goal, a two-point goal, a one-point goal, and an assist, hitting every offensive category. Otto will just take his time at Art. Here we see where the Spirit just getting back behind the ball. Yeah, they want to get five behind the ball, but I still think I would come and pressure them defensively and make Cleveland chase and run. Here's See Andy. what kind of fitness those players that have been out have. Andy Spencer in a double team. He can't control. It's back out to Carbonara. Glenn Carbonara with one three-pointer on the year. His only goal was the game winner when the Crunch beat Harrisburg on the 11th of November. Here's the ball up ahead to Henry Gutierrez. He's knocked down by Jason Dieter. There's a look at the first-year player. He's spent a couple of years in France. Watch again just from behind. See, and that's where Baltimore's got to be really wary of following these guys. It gives Hector and Zorn a good chance off the restart. Here's Marinero. Oh, the uh, tipping at the far post by Gutierrez goes high. Boy, good chance. That ball was bouncing just a little bit. A tough ball at the far post, but certainly one Henry could have finished. Hector Marinero was the MVP of the league two years ago when he scored a record 248 points. That has since been shattered. Here is Carrot on a run. Tries to beat Johnson. Got a good foul. Paul Plunky scores. Well, good start for Cleveland. Zoran actually got a little bit lucky there, Ed. I don't think he meant for that ball to go through his leg, but there's the old toe poke. You saw Picaro come out and just puts the toe on it. That's worth two points. It's Zoran's 11th two-pointer of the season. Gives him 21 goals on the year. The time of the goal is 6.06, and the crunch is drawn first blood. They lead to nothing. John Terry on the way, an all-star off to the right. He's pushed by Tim Tima. Good call by Terry Campbell, and this will give the Spirit a restart deep in the crunch attack third. Yeah, I didn't hear if there was an assist on that last goal, but that ball actually came off Hector's heel to Zoran. In the words of Pee Wee Herman, I meant to do that. There's a good look at Otto Orff. Otto comes in with a record of 6-1. and one. The restart, Boardman. The stits out high. It's Perry left footer. And Otto got a piece of it again. John Perry is very dangerous with both feet. He's coming off years of 161 points and 157 points. The guy can score. Well, what I like about Baltimore is they set up the guys behind the three-point arc, and they roll it back for the three-pointer. Boardman originally played a bad ball, but then the second ball went back to Perry, and it was a good strike by John. Whitman ahead to Stitz. Barry with a right footer. He whistles it wide, and Tanner will try to track down the rebound. He has it along the far boards, looking for an opening. Goes across, and the crunch find a bit of room. Carriage in a race, can't control. Great dummy run by Perry here. Stitz off to the corner. Otto to beat him. And Arf won the battle. A three on two developing. The Spirit get back. One touch play to Marinero. He's being marked by Whitman, tries to spin. That's a trademark Marinero move, and Tim Whitman will be called for the foul. Well, that time it was a good foul by Tim Whitman because Hector certainly had him turn and was going to have a clear shot at goal. That's about as close as you're going to get without a two-minute being called. Soren Carriage with 18 assists this year, plays the Marinero. The one-timer and hit Lance Johnson in front of the Baltimore Spirit goal. Every ball Hector has hit so far has been on the screw. And every free kick Zoran has had, he's played it to Hector. The Spirit able to gain control, and they play it back to Chris Vaccaro. Vaccaro coming in with a record of 2-1 and one and a points against a 12.05. We told you he's been out a lot with a hamstring injury. Yeah, I was teasing it before the game. I said, 
who's starting in goal? He said, probably me. I said, what, Joe can't go? <laughs> the starter can't go? He said, that's probably right, seeing that Melius was 5-1 in his athletes. Tariq Walker, number four there, last year's NPSL Rookie of the Year. He's also been hampered by injuries. Uh, he's played in seven of the nine games, but uh, he's on a bad ankle. And so far, his point production, only four. Last year, he scored 73 points. Well, he's, he's been rotating with Marcano up front. Marcano, 29-year-old rookie. Yep. Derek Marcano, he uh, spent four years in the U.S. Marine Corps. We'll get into that more when Derek gets up. But I really like Tariq Walker. He's in the wall right now as the crunch move ahead. Walker on the ball. He's a big boy. 6'2", 200 pounds. Steal by Dragicevic. A nice move. He'll play it across. It was blocked by Sloan. There you see Sloan, who does it on both ends of the floor. Not only does he score, he gets back and helps out defensively. Yeah, people around the NPS element saying, who's Kevin Sloan? Yeah. Where, where did he come from? But as you said, 90 points last year in only 28 games in Dayton. So he really started to come on at the end of last season. Well played through just a bit off the feet of Dragicevic. Then he ran into Chris Morgan. There's a rookie. Chris Morgan, who stepped in and done very well. He started every game for the Spirit in his first season. Well, Cleveland jumps out and he asks, how important is the first goal in this league? And the league as a whole is 17 and 26 when, they, when scoring the first goal. So it would not seem to mean much, but as a player, boy, any goal is important. Barf will play long. Gutierrez will try to track it down. It's going to one hop to Vicaro. Quick outlet. He finds Sloan over to cut him off as Schmetzer. Great pass. Perry one time or he didn't get it all. Timo trapped it. That's, that's, a I, block. <laughs> that's right. It's a block shot. <laughs> Tim, you should have just let it bounce off your shin. Here comes Carvadera. Plays with an overlapping Schmetzer. And he got his way through the box. And that one almost hit Vicaro and went in behind. Andy Schmetzer and the game against Kansas City had six goals. You talk about stepping up big time, Ed. Here's Zorn and Hector both out, and Schmetzer steps up, scores six goals, and three by the rookie Gutierrez. Well knocked into the crunch third, Scott Schweizer. Little drink of water before he gets back on the floor. Uh, he didn't want it all, I guess. And it'll be a restart for the crunch. Hector Marinero. I disagree with you, though, Ed. It's got to be one of those new sports drinks. Nobody drinks water anymore. <laughs> you got me. There's Brad Smith. What a welcome addition to the spirit he's been. Cut out of the mold of Dave McWilliams. Overlapping run, spins onto it at the yellow line, off the boards. There's Marcano. He was just a bit shy to get to the ball. What a gun that time by Otto. One of the things Lance Johnson, I, I think, has a bit on Zoran Karic is speed. So if ball goes into the corner, Johnson, a second-year player, will be able to at least get to the ball quicker if he reads it right. Like that one. Well, you can go forward on Zoran. You just have to be careful you don't give the ball away because he's cheating at the other end. Here's Perry, left foot three-pointer. It's going to trickle on through. Tima there to help. Or if he goes long, uh, playing a little catch with Chris Vaccaro. Air McNair. <laughs> there is Steve Boardman. Here's Derek Marcano. 29-year-old rookie. Now to Sloan. Look out. Tees up a right footer. That's in the seats. There it is. All sport. I told you. I don't know. Does it look like it? They're oh, not they, filled. We, They're not yeah, put, filled. Put something in those cups. Well, you know why they do that? See, Hector just spit out half of it, you know? So why fill the whole cup? <laughs> Tanner up ahead, posting his carriage. Double team, still on the ball. He's in a battle with a couple of tough cookies. Elbows flying. Carriage is looking for a little more than a foul call. Good double team that time by Morgan, but you've got to be careful not to foul. He's back there doubling, no reason to to have to go in that hard. There you saw Zoran tugging on Johnson's shirt. Two-man wall. Zoran will take it out 45 feet away, approximately. It's going to be blocked up in the air by Steve Boardman. Tough play for Matt Gary. Played it well. Made a great pass. Team across to Tanner. Tommy Tanner, 26-year-old. On his way to the top of the arc. His right footer is blocked off. The rebound by Carrot sent into the seats. 
And we're going to take a break with 3.38 remaining in the first quarter. The Crunch, a 2-0 lead over Baltimore. We'll be back. This holiday season, while you're shopping, we'll be dropping a ton of money. There is the head coach of the Baltimore Spirit, Dave McWilliams. Intensity, the key to him, and he's got to be pretty happy, Art. Yeah, you know, Baltimore has actually played better defense on the road this year than they have at home. They're averaging only 10 points against on the road. You would think a low-scoring game would favor Baltimore. And, you know, a higher-scoring game would favor Cleveland. We'll just have to see. Andy Schmetzer, uh, he might have gotten that elbow right on the, the metal rail there between the, the boards and the and the glass. It hit the funny bone. Let's have a replay. He's pushed off by, no, it's just the glass, but he caught it. Right on the middle. On. Yep. Yep. Otto Orff will play a right footer. Oh, wow, did Gutierrez get up in the air? Henry Gutierrez is only 5'7". But he left well on that one. Here's Jason Dieter in his third year to John Perry. Played at Rockhurst College where he's a three-time All-American. Battle for the ball. And a foul is going to be called against Matt Gary. Gary, uh, a Cleveland native. Solon High School in Penn State. Out of Penn State. Yep. There's a ball played off to the far corner. Perry wisely played it back to the midfield, and the spirit will re-rack. Here's a guy they love to hate yep. in Cleveland, Slick Whitman. It, but it's a guy you'd love to oh, have on boy. your team. My kind of player. Yep. Seven knee surgeries. Here is Jason Dieter with some space. Schmetzer to cut him off. It's off the glass, up in the air, and Otto wins the uh, jump off. Seven knee surgeries, 13 years in the league, and the team comedian. He's also a black belt in karate, believe it or not. Here's a two-on-two -two break with Dragicevic getting back. Perry on the ball. Oh, amazingly, he got the shot off being tugged, and the crunch able to secure And you see possession. how the crunch getting somebody right in front of Otto there, not letting him get that long outlet. That's a big key for yeah. Baltimore. They'd rather give up the foul down there than let him throw it long. We talked about uh, Penn State. Oh, when we get the Car Carbonero, there's more. Here's Marinero on a race, has an opening, plays it high off the glass. Carbonero, left footer, wide but blocked. He's after his own rebound. Gutierrez stepped in. Walker's going to win that battle, and a foul called against Henry Gutierrez. Let's watch Otto again. Perry just trying to bend that ball in. Right. The presence of mind for John Perry there with a guy tugging at him at that pace to try and bend the ball around the keeper. Left footer, slow to trickles! And Whitman is unable to get there before Tanner. The crunch will come back. They've got a three-on-two work in here. Good early ball to Marinero. Here's the right footer. It's blocked by the double team, and Vicaro says, and Merry the, Christmas. The bounces are going the keeper's way at both ends. One minute, one minute remaining for his quarter. One minute to go in the first quarter. Here is Kevin Sloan, overlapping run to Morgan. He ran into Tanner, tangle in the near corner, and Tanner will secure it. But the pass back cut off by Walker. The price goes across, and Tim Tima, an 11-year veteran of this league, one of two players to play in every NPSL season. And last, the last game, Timmy, quite an honor, got his 301st penalty minute. Whoa, a long-range bullet from Carriage, and uh, Vaccaro had to go quickly to his right dive to stop it. Scott Schweitzer has stepped in and been a huge, huge plus for the crunch. A foul called against Lance Johnson in the uh, Cleveland crunch will have a restart. I was kidding Timo before the game. I said, boy, did they present you with a big blue card? <laughs> I bet he enjoyed that. Schweitzer uh, quickly to the ball, played it right onto the uh, possession of Marinero, but his pass too far in front of Tanner. We've got five seconds to go in the quarter, and there's the horn. So pretty evenly fate. First half, Marinero looks like he's right in stride with a couple of strikes to our goal, but after 15 minutes, the crunch with a slight 2 nothing lead over the Spirit will be back. This holiday season. Ed Vicinic and Art Kramer back at the Cleveland State University Convocation Center. Gary Henley uh, making little notations to himself for the adjustments. 
Coming up next on the Deuce, college basketball, the great Alaskan shootout. A couple of games, Villanova against Alaska Anchorage, and the nightcap will be Arizona against Minnesota. Yeah. Speaking of coaches, how would you like to be the coach at Alaska Anchorage, trying to recruit players about it. for your school? And a very happy birthday to George Hoffman. To brunch on I'd sing to him, but I think he'd want a happy birthday, so I'll refrain from that. It's the mini ball toss, which is a fan favorite and tradition here in Cleveland. The tradition here. Yep, look what I got. Now the the idea here is to get their attention. There's a happy nice fan. Catch. Whoa, nice yes. And Hector always has the last ball. It's it's called milking. I got it. Oh, it's a little bit over my head. He tried for me. Uh, he's no Eric McNair, is he? <laughs> no way. There we are. We didn't get a ball. I'm going to have to talk to Hector about that. Tima. You know? Tima's my man. Okay. Tima usually hits me with one. All right, we'll see. He was on target just a little high. Yeah, I was. Know. All right, second quarter action. Incompletion. Yep. Well, you know, he's been out of the lineup for a little while. Up high is Lance Johnson. Here is Brad Smith. Smith this year with 22 points. So, a wicked angle shot from Tanner. He's going to whistle along quickly off the boards with Schweitzer and Good. Well, second and third quarters, and this is really where Cleveland has turned it on this year. They lead the league in these two quarters, a plus 31, followed by St. Louis, plus 22, and then Baltimore to plus 11. So they have just dominated the second and third quarters. Perry with the first to speed, a left footer. Otto had the angle, and Schweitzer got him the ball back. <laughs> Schweitzer, sorry, I almost knocked it in the, in the net. Otto said, that's okay, it didn't go in. There's the left foot of John Perry. Perry actually had an unbelievable start with Baltimore getting the game-winning goal in the first two games. But he had five goals in the first seven some odd minutes. Yeah, in, a, in the opener. And 17 minutes, 21 seconds, which, 17. Is, a, which is an NPL rec, NPSL record for the quickest five goals. There's John Perry. Spent last season in Kansas City. The last couple, he won an NPSL championship there. See you next. I say just contain them there and don't foul because now you're letting them set up a restart where they have so much success. Let them beat you one on one and score the two pointer. It's a good point, Art, but you know, a lot of defenders have this mentality of, you know, let them know you're there. Carrots across. Tanner got a piece of it. Marinero on a bouncing rebound. He missed wide and the rebound will come off where Tim See, Tima but there, There's two good chances instead of the Take one that he might have had it had he turned them. Lance Johnson was on the all rookie team last year. He's in the second year. He'll learn. There's John Perry, and it's a two-on-two -two break. A couple of trailers coming late. Perry to his left, ran into Schweitzer. He just makes great decisions when to tackle. Give and go. Johnson, left footer, just missed wide. I think it hit the post. There's the quick outlet, and a two-on-one for the crunch. Perry at the controls. Whitman just smelt it out. Got a toe on it. Yeah, Hector was trying to run far post. Probably should have stayed where he was. Here's a two on three on one. Uh, good save again by Orff, and Tanner got him the rebound. Otto has been there this evening. Yeah, but that two on one for Cleveland was created by Baltimore, who had a four on three, not making the right decision. Take a wild shot, and then it's coming back at you the other way. Otto almost to the midfield. We'll dump it in. Gutierrez. Henry holds off Bortman, tried to cut it to Schmetzer. Crunch get it back after a couple of bounces. Gutierrez, great creativity. He was a two-time ACC Player of the Year at North Carolina State. There's the saves, and Otto has come up with a few big ones of those eight. Yeah, at least three or four. Four balls that were right in the corner. John Perry stuck in in the corner. He commits the foul, and the Crunch will have a free kick. Zorn quickly off the bench against the man carry. Oh. Yeah, I'd say that's a foul. Carriage toe poke gets blocked out in front by Boardman. It's going to roll all the way to Orp outside of his yellow line. Otto this season has five assists. There's Dragicevic. He missed high and wide. Tariq Walker on the rebound. There's a battle. Chris Morgan will play off to Barry Stitz. Stitz, one of four players on the Baltimore roster from Towson State. 
A good turn by Smith. And a and foul is going to be called, and it's a two-minute penalty. Well, not much different than the one earlier in the game on, on Hector Marinero, but anytime you got a good chance to score and you're taken down, it should be two minutes. Uh, a, a bit. I'd say uh, Brad Smith deserves at least the nomination for an Oscar, but uh, he got what he wanted, and we'll go to the shootout. Yeah, in Baltimore and Cleveland, the top two teams in the league on shootouts. Baltimore, nine for 14. Here's Sloan. He's two of five. The guy that's been doing great for him has been Tim Whitman. He's been four of four. Let's watch Sloan. Evan Sloan with five seconds to get it passed out of war. Worth one point. Fires a right foot, and I think he got it through his legs. It counts for one in Baltimore on the board at 317 of the second quarter. Hey, see, Otto shaking his head. He oh. just didn't react. I, I wonder if Kevin Sloan is good at miniature golf. <laughs> he played the windmill right. perfect. The windmill. <laughs> so now Baltimore will go to a power play. They will play five against four should they score during it. For the next two minutes, it will also be worth one point. Yeah, Baltimore's power play, 35%. That's the league average is 35%. Cleveland's man down, kills it at 85%, so they're second in the league. They have only given up two goals while shorthanded the crunch. Two in 14 attempts, so that's that's real good penalty, penalty killing. Kevin Sloan acquired by the Spirit in a trade that sent Rob Ucrup and Clark Grissom to the Dayton Dynamo. Dave McWilliams, intensity, that was his trademark, and it hasn't changed when he gets behind the bench. I know sometimes he gets frustrated that he can't go out there himself. And he's actually coming back from a, about with some dizziness that they really didn't know what was going on. He was in the hospital for a little while, but he says he's feeling better. Yeah, they, he still doesn't know, and I asked him before the game how he felt. He said, he said all right, but still a little bit shaky, so... Tim Sirambit is on for his first shift for Cleveland. He's out with Prakisovic, Schmetzer, and Tima. The power play unit for the Spirit consists of Sloan, Perry, Whitman, Smith, and Stitz. Smith wins the ball at three on two if they hurry, but Stitz is a little late. He's going to slow the pace. That's a good play there that time by Smith to back it out. It's two against three. Got a minute 10 to go in the spirit power play. Here is Smith with space. Perry left foot or not, a good fake. He moves out to the corner, a tangle with Schmetzer. And Andy Schmetzer wins the battle. He can't get out of his own box. Back heel pass, didn't have a lot of pace. A good shield by Brad Smith in the foul called against the captain, Tim Tima. Well, Tima didn't think he touched him, but the referee ruled the intent was there. I think uh, Smith has gotten a couple calls tonight. Whitman tried to curl it in far side. His own man headed it out, though. Ball was right there. Here is Sloan on the season. 12 one-point goals, 50 points. Perry a space right footer. Otto there to knock it down. And the rebound comes out to Sloan. They've got 40 seconds of power play left. Brad Smith. John Perry. Some space. Kevin Sloan moving forward. His right footer blocked by Trigisevich, and Sloan wins the race and gets it back to McCarroll. Well, should have time to set up one more good chance here with 25 seconds left on the power play. John Perry into Stitz. Cuts to his right, back to his left. Schmetz are right with him. Perry an opening. He scores! A one-point power play goal by John Perry. It'll come at the 5.06 mark of the second quarter, and for John Perry, his fifth one-point goal yeah. of the season. And perseverance pays off for Perry. That's got to be about his tenth shot in the first quarter. We're in a 2-2 tie with 9.54 to go in the second quarter. We'll be back. There's John Perry, the score of the power play goal, and Art, let's take a look at it. He's been striking the ball well all night long. Yeah, Johnny coming off a big game against Dayton. Four goals in that game, and there's another one for him. Well, both of the spirit goals have been nutmegs between the legs of a defender or a keeper. Sloan scored on the shootout between the legs of Orff. Perry on the shootout between the legs of Siren Beatty. Here's the crunch. Give it go. Marinero's left winner wide. Team on the rebound. 
They'll send it back in Fortman and Marinero in a tango. Now a race for the ball. It's won nicely by Marcano. He's a big, strong guy. Derek Marcano, 5'10", 190 pounds. I think Boardman did a good job on that last give and go. Staying with Hector, not ball watching, but staying with the man. And here you see the foul. <laughs> Team of caught in the offensive third. Wanted to make sure he got back on defense. Not a bad foul to take there. Kevin Sloan had a couple of outstanding games against the Chicago Power early in the season. He scored eight and ten points against them in the two meetings that started the season for Baltimore. Oh, now they're going to give a shootout. It looks like for Cleveland. There's Derek Marcano. We talked about him earlier. He spent right. four years in the U.S. Marine Corps, then went to Essex Community College, and then on to Townsend State. Boy, I'd like to see this one again. Yeah, I missed it <laughs> as well. Good look well, at the 29-year-old. It's just going to be a kick in. Uh, it must be descent. John, the crunch will go to the power play for the next two minutes. No shootout involved here. Should the crunch score, they will receive one point. And a crunch, 43% on the power play. And that's fourth in the league. And boy, they're happy to have Hector back for these power plays. Another dimension that he adds to this Cleveland team. For the Baltimore Spirit, they'll defend with Sloan, Johnson, Dieter, and Whitman. Carrich on the ball in a spot that he's racked up a lot of assists from. Across, and it's a goal for Gutierrez. You know, the Baltimore players have a break there. The, the whistle hadn't blown to start the play, and he put that ball in play early. Didn't give Baltimore a chance to react. Gutierrez with a sinner. He scores the goal. Henry Gutierrez, his 31st point of the season, his fourth one-point goal. There you take a look at the 26-year-old from Hoboken, New Jersey. He was a two-time ACC Player of the Year at North Carolina State in 1990 and 91. As a matter of fact, the guy who won it in 92 also plays for the Crunch, Scott Schweitzer from NC State. A pipeline. So the Crunch goes ahead 3-2 with that power play goal. Our full play long. Marinero there against Johnson. Lance Johnson, double team help from Sloan. He got a double minute. One. Good stuff. Here's Perry with an opening. Slides it ahead. Tanner was able to stick a right foot in and then get it back dangerously to Ottawa. Long range. This one is a bit misguided. And Baltimore was caught with three men forward. Not a very good throw that time by Otto. And it came at a juncture where the crunch could have gone off two on one. Lance Johnson in a tangle with Marinero. They're going to call a foul against Marinero, and he's not real pleased. I thought it was a good call. Looked I like he bumped too. him a little from behind. Right there. Yep, there's the push. The right arm was out. Well, he hasn't been in action for a while. He wants to get a few arguments in early. There's Perry again. Left footer. It bounced high, and Otto was able to scramble and react to that. That's one of those change-up shots yep. that has a goalie committed and kind of just leaks by you. Yeah, and Baltimore needs to recognize and Otto's going down early. And you saw in that last shot. Here it is again. Watch again. Watch how Otto drops down early, and if he shoots that ball high, it's in. Crunch on the attack. Carrick, so what a great cross ball. Tanner uh, runs into the slide tackle of Lance Johnson, then a double team. Baltimore will come away. Johnson with a pretty play. He is up ahead to Walker, who has some room. He scores! Tariq Walker, that's a three-pointer. And the Baltimore Spirit will go ahead five to three. Great individual work from the second-year man out of Virginia Tech. And Ed, you know what that reminded me of? It's like a Reggie White bull rush. Just going right by the guy, and you see him just touch it. And yep. that, is, that is a three-pointer. Originally, when he played that ball, I thought he was going to go off the boards, and maybe that was his intent. Yeah, Either right. way, he would have come out a champ, but he gets an extra point because it went in from outside the three-point arc. Uh, he just blew by Tima, though. 7.39, the time of the three-point goal for Tariq Walker, his first three-pointer of the season. He's got seven points on the year. 
We're about midway through the second quarter with the Spirit holding their first lead of the game at 5-3. to three. Along the far boards, Stitz wins the battle with Schmetzer, and they'll get it back for Vaccaro. He slings it out. Chris Morgan won an NCAA Division III championship at Elizabethtown at Pennsylvania. Matt Gary will track it along the far boards. <laughs> And uh, Terry Campbell, the official, could get out. He did a good job the first time to get out of the way. But... Two on one. Oh, Sloan can't get the ball to Smith. And the crunch coming back two on three. Early ball from Schmetzer. Gutierrez holds off Dieter. And a foul call. Now, one thing about Henry Gutierrez, he's only 5'7", but he's very strong on the ball. Yeah, he's been impressive. I've only seen him play one time and was anxious to get another look at him. Boy, he does look like a tough player. He's played every position for the crunch uh, offensively. The midfield slots, the target man, the second forward. He's really just learning the indoor game. Oh, uh, ball that slid between two defenders. Gordon pushed Spencer into the glass, and Steve is not real happy. You know, if you're going to learn the game, who better to learn from uh, yeah. Zoran and Hector? Carriage in Boy, a dangerous, dangerous spot. There you see uh, the two-man wall. A couple of fakes through the area out high. Isovich is going to have to backtrack together. He's a former NPSL All-Star. Oscar Isovich, he did it in 90-91 with the Detroit Rockers. Now Kevin Sloan cuts it left side. Brad Smith tried to curl it around Schmetzer. Mandy gets the block. Good win of the ball by Jason Dieter, and he comes ahead with numbers. Dieter tried to cut it, and Schmetzer read it. See, that's where you're going to get four on threes against Cleveland. you got to take care of the ball. All right, we're going to take another break as the Baltimore Spirit lead the Cleveland Crunch 5-3. Believe it or not, it's getting to be that time. The day after Thanksgiving, the big, biggest shopping day of the year and Christmas right around the corner. And I'm sure she's expecting something good from Santa Claus. For sure. Later tonight on uh, The Deuce, the best of talk to is on tap. Some of the people you'll see and hear from, George Foreman, Frank Thomas, Sugar Ray Leonard, Walter Payton, Carl Lewis, and Buster Douglas. Terry Campbell, the official tonight. Maybe he'll tune in and see what Jim Rome has on tap. We return with a Baltimore free kick, and they've been all over the crunch in this quarter. Whitman tried to curl it around again. Gutierrez in the wall blocked it. Whitman with another attempt. He's yelling for a handball. Won't get the call. Gutierrez running three on three with a late runner, Carbonero. And Perry back into the play. Tries to cut to his right. Glenn is not a right-footed player. Perry can just let him have that space. Re-rack with Otto Orff. Told you Dragicevic was an all-star player with Detroit. He had 85 points in that 90-91 season. Ball out of play. Go to the Baltimore Spirit. Learned the soccer from his brother Emil Dragicevic. Former player for St. Louis. Dave McWilliams pace in the bench. There's a spin-out move and a goal by Brad Smith. He spun Dragicevic on the far side and scored, and the Spirit take a 7-3 lead. And this is a great indoor goal, Ed. And watch, I'll tell you what. He plays that ball off the boards to allow himself space and then just makes a turn and hits a shot. Nice use of the boards that time. Had a step on Dragicevic, the ninth goal of the season for Brad Smith. He's been on a roll, had eight points, including the game-winning goal against Buffalo last week. It will be unassisted, and the time of the goal will be 9.41. So Brad Smith extends the lead for the Spirit, who are playing well. They've been all over the crunch. They have outshot them 10-3 in this quarter. Marinero knocks it a bit too far ahead. And Vaccaro is able to play it up the boards. A foul will be called against the Spirit of Link that's uh, Barry Stitz. Good look at Barry. Carriage moving one on one against Morgan. Back to Scott. White serve. Had it into a posting carriage. He tries to spin, and oh, Morgan took him down. Well, but when you take as many dives as the Z-Man does, sometimes you're not going to get the call. It, it's almost like the little boy that cried wolf. See, and now Baltimore's got a numbers advantage going the other way, and if they just take their time and are careful with the ball, which they weren't there, they'll get good opportunities. Tanner, backtracking, he'll get it to Orff. 
Now it lays it off to Tim Tima. Tim is a five-time NPSL first-teamer. Here's a numbers-up situation with Carriage trying to get back as well as Marinero. Whitman, a three-pointer, he missed high, and Otto played it well off the glass. Two on one the yeah, other way. That, if right. you shoot and you miss, here they come. Off the glass, Carriage! Thank you! Thank you! That's why you got to be careful going forward against these guys. You just can't slam balls off the board, or they're coming two on one the other way. And so, those two guys make you pay better than anybody in the league. Zorin Kares, the NPSL's player of the week, a couple of weeks ago, with a flying the right footer, played high off the boards by Marinero, the dynamic duo hookup. All right, that's just a great finish. A lot great. of guys would have gone for their heads. Great finish, but on the other end, I can't stress enough. Just not a very good job going forward by Baltimore. So the crunch within two points at 7-5, and they've stopped a bit of a run of five points scored by the Baltimore Spirit. We're in the later stages of the second quarter. Jason Dieter loops one ahead. He's going to bounce high and Otto there to collect. You know, that's a tough goal for Baltimore to give up. You've got everything going your way, and then to get caught forward like that, Here's why Seacrest on for his first shift. Yeah, Seacrest has only played in four games, but got the game-winning goal against Cleveland's big rival, Canton Invaders, in Canton. And that was the first regular season goal for West Seacrest. And that was at a time when Torrin Karic had been thrown out of that game. Hector not in the lineup. Seacrest comes up big with the game winner. They're going to call that foul against Cleveland, and Steve Boardman will restart. Carbonero read it well, stepped in front of Walker. Lakes flying all over the place at the midfield strike. Man, there's a lot of guys going and went fleets uh, up, so to speak. Kevin Sloan. Boy, he ran into Gutierrez. Baltimore is taking a timeout here as we watch Henry Gutierrez run up. Next chance to see the great balls of fire on the NPSL is in two weeks, December 9th, when the Dayton Dynamo, who got out of the gates very well this year, they've struggled a little bit lately against the Canton Invaders from the Memorial Civic Center in Canton. Dave McWilliams with a few words, and like you said, Art, I think he's probably telling him, we can't get caught up field. Yeah, and there's one of the defenders, Steve Boardman, tell him, don't leave us alone with Hector and Zorin. <laughs> Over on the other side, Gary Henley telling his guys to uh, stick in there and keep fighting. He's been very pleased with the way the crunch has played this entire season as far as the level of their intensity. Well, he should be. He's had a couple guys, as we talked about Seacrest. The other guy, Scotty Schweitzer, stepped up to score the winning goal in the last game when Hector and Zorin were out. So getting production from guys that they normally wouldn't count on. I think you got to mention Matt Gary and Tim Serenbides, too. There's the pair. As the Spirit come ahead with a two-point lead, Andy Schmetzer, he's one of the most versatile top guys you're going to find. He, he can play defensively for you, he can run midfield, he can be the second forward. And I don't know if he's played much as a target man lately, but if he was forced into that situation, I'm sure he'd show himself well. Great role player. Yeah. He's another guy, just like Tim Whitman, who was drafted out of high school and has been playing professionally for nine years, even though he's only 27 years old. Tim Whitman, the other guy we just talked about, Slick. Yeah, he has fun playing. There's a bullet that goes over the crossbar. Tariq Walker, I like Tariq Walker. What a player. Oh, nice ball from Carbonero. Marinero having trouble getting it under control. Now Schmetzer, a bouncing ball. Oh, he hit a low liner that was smothered by the power. Baltimore looks a little disorganized right now. Just over two minutes to play. Stitz on a run. He ran over Carbonara. Play continues on. That's a good no call there. Both guys sticking in, playing hard. Both went down. Barry Stitz. Stitz with 19 points this season. He scored 63 points as a rookie two years ago and was the NPSL's runner-up to the... The guy you 
just talked about it, Pat Gary wants the ball off the boards, and you know, there's a little bit of rush showing on Chris Picaro there. Dance, baby, dance. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. Well, I guess there's an even advance there. I, I don't know, but get those kids back in school. First professional goal for Matt Gary. He was just looking to keep that ball down and on goal. He struck it well, and he gets his first Marinero with a deflection. The Crunch looking to get a lead by halftime. It's tied at seven now as the Crunch has come back from 7-3. The little run that the Spirit had has subsided. They're going to try and get it back now. Goal for them before the half would be big. Lance Johnson, Chris Love on for his first shift. 23-year-old from the University of Hartford. He's a big, strong, intense defender. Out of Brad Smith, he scored tonight. And now Baltimore has that numbers advantage. Let's see what they do with the ball. Here's Love over the line, poked it in, tried to get it back to Sloan. He touched it with his hand, and it was indeed caught by the official. Devin Sloan, what, what a great work rate he has. Coming up at halftime, we'll start with the sports match and Bill Pito. Yeah, after that, we'll go live to the locker room as always. And then we'll look at the greatest game ever. That must have been the game our producer, George Ferris, was at today. <laughs> Youngstown State and Alcorn State. George gets the Hustle Award for making it back in time. He went from Youngstown to get here. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll hear about that on dispatch. There was a record set in that game. Air McNair, but you're going to have to watch Sports Master. You want to find out. Very good. Harris Whitman. Left footer, he scores. Otto couldn't see a thing. A huge goal for the Baltimore Spirit. Well, he was screened. He was screened. Tommy Tanner right in front of him. And I think that's going to be a three. Watch I Whitman. I think you're right. He used him as and a look, screen. See Tanner? Otto didn't, Otto didn't, Otto didn't even react. Yeah. Boy, is that a big momentum killer there. It is a three-point goal for Mr. Tim Whitman, his first three-pointer of the season. Gary Hindley not happy with that. 28 points on the season for that 13-year veteran you saw right there. He has had five four-point games this season. He's already three into that four. Marinero toe post beat aside by Vaccaro. 10-7, the Spirit lead it. Tima, after a loose ball, into Marinero, posting, can't control it. Tima stuck a foot in, Boardman won it with a strong move. Six seconds to go in the half. Walker leads for Sloan, but by the time he gets it, the horn's gonna go. There it is, so the Spirit with a three-pointer late in the first half will go to the lockers with a 10-7 lead over the Cleveland Crunch. As the Crunch head off to the locker room, we'll take a break and return with the smash. We're back at the Cleveland State University Convocation Center where the Spirit hold a 10-7 lead and the head coach of the Baltimore Spirit has to be real pleased with that score line. In fact, we're gonna go down and see how pleased he is. Into the uh, Baltimore locker room. Four minutes. Get a drink, guys, and just relax a little bit. Where's John Perry? What you do, John? Sorry, guys, I try to go long. Let's go, guys. You're going to say, Well, they got to be pleased with the lead, as we said, in a foreign building and getting a late goal. I'm sure he'll be pleased if he can find all his players. <laughs> well, you know, the last time I was in this building was game four of the NPSL championship, and I was fortunate enough to see one of the, the greatest indoor soccer games I've ever seen when the Cleveland Crunch went to double overtime to beat the St. Louis Ambush and win the NPSL championship. Yeah, in fact, you got called in as, in a substitute role there for the championship game. What it's a job. Unbelievable. So let's take a look and listen to how the Crunch won that championship. And the Crunch in a dangerous spot. The crowd is on their feet at the Convocation Center. And I can tell you, Ed, when you're standing in that wall, it's sheer panic. Do we got this covered? Do we that got that covered? Carriage. 
the Marinelli scores! Oh, we... Seven plus minutes of overtime. There's a big steal. Otto out of his goal. He got a piece of it. The rebound, Doyle. Another stop by Orr. Deb Rees almost caught Otto Orr napping. When you're in a championship series like this, I don't think the mental part of it leaves you, but it could be a mental mistake that ends this one. Look out. Reiniger behind the defense. Otto came flying out to make the stop, and his teammates able to possess in the midfield to give him time to get back. Here comes George Fernandez. The crunch has numbers. Spencer on the board. There it is. Scores. The crunch has won it. seen a game of that much excitement with that much on the line well I haven't seen one I played in a few of championship games when I was back at Canton but boy that was an exciting day and exciting time for the people of Cleveland they have gone almost 30 years or so without a championship yeah you know and uh, the way that I am even ended up in the building was amazing I, I mean I had come out here just to enjoy the game and hopefully celebrate a championship with some friends and uh, a couple hours before the game, they said they need somebody to do the game, and here I was. Unbelievable. And, and you got paid. <laughs> Amazing. We'll be back with more of the 1994-95 season, the crunch in the spirit after a break. We're back at the CSU Convocation Center where the Spirit lead the crunch by three points. And a look at the first half statistics. There you see the score, the shots on goal favoring heavily the Baltimore Spirit. Yeah, no surprise there, though. Baltimore leads the league 41.5 shots per game. And I think no surprise in the foul department, too, with Baltimore out fouling the crunch by five. There's a scoring summary in the second quarter. Sloan started it out for the shootout. John Perry then on the power play to get both points. Henry Gutierrez scored for the crunch on the power play. The three-point goal by Walker that really changed the flow of the game. Then Brad Smith scored unassisted. Uh, Zoran Carriage came back to even things up. And then uh, uh, Matt Gary with his first professional goal before Tim Whitman scored the second three-pointer of the game. Here are the goals. Zorin carries with and, the first And watch goal. this ball go through with the legs. I don't think Zorin intended that. And a nice finish. You know, that happens a lot to good players where they get the bounces just because of the flow. Here's the shootout by Sloan. Yeah, right through the five hole, as you mentioned. And on the ensuing power play, the Spirit will get the other half of the two points. John Perry, John. been on fire. John Perry, five goals in the last two games. Now the crunch with a free kick. And that, good that, that was the one where Baltimore really wasn't ready. The whistle hadn't gone. And you see the Baltimore player pointing there. There's a look at Joe Malia, the guy who's been very hot in goal for the Baltimore Spirit. Art. I would think we're going to see him in the second half. You usually don't warm up unless you're coming in the game. Let's go downstairs to Dave McWilliams, the Baltimore Spirit head coach uh, we have down near the locker room. And uh, Dave, I guess the first question I have for you, are we going to see a goalkeeper change? Yeah, Chris uh, was struggling before the game, and uh, he's not going to be able to go anymore, so Joe's going to come in. Uh, give us your view of the first half of play. You had a stretch there where you guys ran off really well in the second quarter. you got to be pretty pleased, huh? Yeah, uh, except for uh, three or four minutes late in that uh, quarter, I, I thought we were playing well. Uh, we just got to be a little bit more disciplined and uh, make sure we don't get caught in the counterattacks. Yeah, Dave, Art Kramer, let's change the subject a little bit. you got the NC2A playoffs coming up here. You are the all-time leading scorer in the NC2A playoffs. What do you see there in those playoffs? 
I don't see much. I'm just worrying about tonight, buddy. I'll let you guys up there worry about that. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Dave McWilliams. We'll get more into that uh, leading score of the NCAA tournament as we go on. We're going to take another break and then be back for the second half here at CSU. This Our second half is the Spirit lead the class 10 to 7. Gary Hindley behind the thing among a lot of things that Hindley and McWilliams have in common is they're both from the Philadelphia area. Dave McWilliams. Good East Coast soccer school. Dave McWilliams, we talked about his NWR. He had 29 in the late 70s for Philadelphia Textile and that 29 points in the NCAA tournament is still a record that stands today. And my alma mater, South Carolina, there's the new goalkeeper for the Baltimore Spirit, Joe Melia. And one, as I said earlier, 13.60 points against average. Nice backup. And I really believe you need two good goalies in this league. At no question about it. You play those three games in three days. Uh, assistant coaching duties oh, with the for the one timer right. that just but, bounced wide. And he's got to still keep himself in the game, though. There right. could be a situation where Malia might get a penalty, Malia might go down with an injury. So if you're Chris Vaccaro, you still want to keep focused on this game. Wes Sechrist uh, in for the first shift of the second half on defense with Glenn Carbonara. Oscar Trigisevic will uh, wait for his next turn. We talked about the NCAA tournament. Glenn Carbonara went to Rutgers, his team playing Matt Gary's alma mater, Penn State University, on Sunday. So a little bit going on there. See, now it's another time. It's just a bad foul. Zorn will take control. And this one should go to Hector. There's Marinero, right footer. He scores! 500 indoor goals. Well, a tough way for Joe Malia to start. That should be a three, Eddie. 500 goals. It is indeed a three, and the Crunch have tied it at 10. We've had three three-pointers this evening. But there again, Baltimore not making Cleveland earn their goals, giving them restarts down deep in the Baltimore zone. Hector Marinero wanted to pass along hellos to his in-laws watching in Palm Springs, California. And a special hello to Cameron, who is watching his first soccer game on television. There he is, one half of the dynamic duo. So we're in a 10-10 tie, and the crunch coming right to left. Schweitzer into the attack. He tried a one-timer that was blocked by Derek Marcano. Tim Tima held off John Terry and drew the foul. And you're right, that's a tough way for Pally to start. Looked like a shot that he might have been able to stop, but just a little slow in reacting. You know, every like I said earlier, every ball that Hector's hit has been pretty much a one-timer that he's, he's struck very solid. Here's another one. Barry Stitz going, what else can I do? I think contain is yes. the key word. Garrett tries to curl one and hit Perry in the wall. Marinero, one-timer. He's wide of the mark. And the spirit cleared up to the near side. Boy, that'll soften the wall up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not fun standing in there, is it? There is Marinero against Whitman. Back heel and missed the mark. Dangerous move by Stitz. He is able to find some space, but his pass ahead picked up by Schweitzer. He bangs one off the ball, not hard enough to get to Marinero. Brad Smith backtracking. Whitman, nice little touch pass. He'll get the ball back from Stitz. Coming ahead for the Spirit, left footer, he missed wide. Team on the rebound, popped it in the air. 
Perry poked it ahead, left it back. Here's a play to Wyndon. Oh, Wyndon could, either couldn't catch up to it or decided he didn't have yeah. company. After seven knee surgeries, yes. <laughs> that'll slow you down a little bit. A right, good, great ball movement from the Baltimore Spirit that time down the cup. Here's Matt Gary, who scored his first professional goal in the second quarter. Oh, I'm not back. Back heel, not back. And a foul. So, once again, in a dangerous spot, the Crunch will have a free kick. Watch this. Well, See ya. Good fight by Lance Johnson to get yeah, back into I that would, play. I don't think that's a foul, but, you know, did get the left arm up high. Zorn Karich has swipes her high, he'll toe poke it, and it skimmed on through. Malia able to handle it. Kevin Sloan ran into Tanner. Too many men on Cleveland. Yes, they still have too many men out on the floor. There's six guys out there, and that will give the Baltimore Spirit a power play. You know it's earlier in the season when you're getting penalties like that. Cleveland comes out, has the momentum to start the second half, and now just a silly too-many-men penalty. It's going to have chance for Baltimore to get a little momentum of their own going. Gary Henley, uh, not real happy with that. that those are the, the bench penalties that you don't like to see because it's a lack of concentration, a lack of communication. There'll be no shootout there. Just a five against four for the Baltimore Spirit, who scored on their power play opportunity in the first half of play, John Perry. Gutierrez is going to sit in the box. You always make those rookies, <laughs> our second-year players, sit the penalties. Here's Whitman. Other guys with no defensive skill. <laughs> Here is Perry. Out high. Sloan one time, so he missed hit it high. The rebound. Schmetzer heads back. For Otto almost handled the ball outside the penalty box, but he was able to recover from that with help from Carbonero. Maybe Schmetzer and Kevin Sloan going at it. A foul called against Kevin Sloan. Good work that time by Schmetzer. When you're on the man down, you want to bring the ball to the board and then hold it on the board. You can either draw the foul or kill some clock. We talked about Kevin Sloan's scoring exploits so far. He also had 13 blocks on the season coming into this game, and that's up in the top three on the Baltimore Spirit block core. And there you saw Baltimore's power play 35%. That's, that is the league average. There is just over a minute on the power play. Left footer by Whitman. Uh, that sailed wide. Perry on the rebound. Marked by Carbonero. Go cross carpet. And Whitman will move on in. Sloan's left footer knocked down by Orr, but volley by Perry, and it's smothered up against the glass by Orr. And what Cleveland does is Zeran Benich will run off and get Zoran Karic on the field offensively. Nima took it down, got it to Orr, he'll go long. Zoran to battle with Sloan. Sloan got it off to it's on the far side. Zoran handles that ball a little bit easier if it's thrown to the boards. Sloan moving ahead now into the target. Whitman. Sloan again into the corner. Perry one time where he got it high. And good early chance taken by John Perry. He just missed it. Look, Ma. Yeah, he's looking to do. I get to keep it. <laughs> Sorry. Got to throw back. He's just happy to be out of school. 18 seconds left on the Baltimore Spirit power play. There's Henry Gutierrez. He scored a goal in the game, taking a little bit of a break. Yeah, that's one of the differences in hockey, the penalty box right next to the bench. You can talk to your teammates while you're in there. You saw him stand next to Bill Andraki, backup goalie. Telling him to get you a little of that sports drink, all sport. How's it feel to be in there, Rook? <laughs> tried to play the boards for Schmetzer. He's on the foot of Whitman, and Whitman will lead him ahead. The penalty is over. Gutierrez goes right to the bench, and Carriage comes out to the front. They'll play into a posting walker. He's hounded by Tim Tima. <laughs> yeah, we said earlier, Tima was a league-leading 301 penalty minutes for his career. That's a lot of minutes in there. You can run a marathon. <laughs> In the time he's been in the box. Left-footed shot from Sloan. It smothered the quick release. Carriage and Whitman is able to get a foot on it, but that's over and back. And that'll give the 
crunch of free kick. It's supposed to be when the ball's passed back. That's more or less a bad trap that went back over the line. Six fouls on Tima this evening. Here's Zorn, right footer up. John Perry has been taking a beating and a wall. And he runs to the Baltimore bench. What is this? I'm one of the smaller guys on the field. What do you call it? Sticking me in there. For? Supposed to be an offensive player. Here's Carriage at the yellow line, trying to turn Johnson. He stayed right with That's him. good yes. containment there. Yes. And there you win the ball. Amelia, to his yellow line, tried to... Oh, that's a defense. giveaway. But there are three back. Tanner turns on the gas into the corner. Couldn't get it across. I thought Malia might have touched him with his hand. No ball. The rebound out the carriage holding off Morgan. Still moving left. Morgan trying to stay with him. He's being turned around. And Chris Morgan got the job done. That's right. Contain him. Don't follow him. And look, now you're off the other way. Here's Sloan at the line. Oh, he just curled it a bit wide. And Tim Whitman will get the rebound. No doubt he can make you look silly on the turn, but better to let him score that way than off the restart. Here's Whitman at the yellow line. We're in a 10-10 tie. With just under nine minutes to go in the third quarter. A toe poke attempt by the veteran Tim Whitman. Good idea, looking for the screen. Oh, bad pass back, but uh, Schweitzer able to get there. And Baltimore comes ahead with numbers. Four on three. Whitman a bit late. Here he comes, left side. Left footer, and Andy Schmetzer saved what could have been a goal. Because Kevin Sloan was perched at the post. Baltimore getting, uh, getting their hooks in on the game here a bit. Tariq Walker around Marinero. Left footer blocked by Schweitzer, who helped. This is four-on-four four soccer because Johnson and Carriage are hanging out in the center circle. Bit of a lazy pass, but Walker helped John Perry out there and lost the ball. Wow, Zorin with a steal. Here he comes, played ahead, Marinero. Couldn't get to the ball. Tima follows up the pass behind Carriage and Baltimore breaking out. The spirit a little slow getting upfield. And look at Tim Tima just pounding Kevin Sloan. Now Brad Smith on with a burst of energy. Off to Perry. A play to Smith. Smith to Perry. Fakes the shot. Moves against a double team. Gary held him off well. Smith followed it up. And there's a foul on Sten Schweitz. Baltimore a little slow to support the play there. And they're two against three, two against four. Here is Lee Ford. Misses him. Perry has an opening in Schmetzer recovered well up ahead to Gutierrez trying to flick it for Schmetzer. Malia out to beat that. It's one at the yellow line by Smith. He thought he had some help. He did. That's good, good trap and turn by Smith. As you said, he thought he had someone coming down the right side, boy. Last weekend in a game we saw on ESPN2, he would have pulled the trigger on that one. Brad Smith, to me, has been a more focused player since coming to Baltimore. He, he usually led the league in fouls or was around the league in fouls and penalties and he stayed out of the box. Left footer by Schmetzer. And a foul called against Baltimore. Yeah, you make a good point to uh, add exactly. You know, sometimes when you've been with a team for a while, you start to get too comfortable and as you said, had been in the box a lot of times, but we have not seen that here since he's joined the Spirit. You know, I think that Dave McWilliams probably had a couple of conversations with Brad Smith on that subject and, and McWilliams and Brad Smith are cut from the same cloth. Both very intense players. And uh, when you ask Dave McWilliams about Brad Smith, he said, my type of player. Boy, Hector is just wide open behind the three-point line. See John Perry on the inside this time? <laughs> and there's a goal by Carbonero. Glenn Carbonero with his second goal of the season, his first two-pointer. The crunch has grabbed the lead back at 12 to 10. Here's a look. Well, restart after restart is going in the back of the spirit net. Carbonero was left alone, and the crunch go ahead. There you see the story. And we'll take a break and return. Great balls of fire. We return with the latest crunch goal, Carriage 
Yeah, and you see the three guys in the wall. That means there's two guys open. And who better to find him than Zoran Karic? That's four assists for the Z-Man here tonight. Boy, just when Pato Marheading from Detroit thought he was going to catch Karic in the assist column this year, Zoran adds four more. So, And he's got 58 points now, which puts him ahead of Dennis Bros. Zoran, the league leader again. That, that's contingent on what Bros is doing tonight yeah, in Chicago. This is true. This is true. There you see the scoring by quarter. Baltimore had a great second quarter, and I actually thought they had a good start to the third, but uh, they have been unable to produce a goal. Secret seeing a regular shift now. 21 year old from Lakewood High School. Well, just when you think Cleveland's going to cease the momentum, Baltimore seems to come back yeah, was, and find a way to stay in. And yeah, Melia was nearly out of the box on that one. That's what the fans are howling about. He did a little pirouette, looked like he belonged in the Joffrey Ballet there. And nice little turn and move in the air, and he kept the ball inside the white line. Joffrey Ballet. Yes. Of a season ticket holder. Don't call me. <laughs> I'll call you, buddy. Here's Spencer, left footer. Missed wide. Carbonara into the attack. Ran into Dieter. And Gary, who's played well. In the corner, tried to spin out. Double team got its hooks in, and then... Uh, Gary Stitz is tripped up there as a look at Matt Gary. He's got to go in this game. Gary actually joined the crunch midstream last year. Didn't get to go through uh, preseason training camp. And Gary Hindley feels that the, the fact that he did go through preseason training has helped him out immensely. Just ask Glenn Robinson. <laughs> yeah. I think he's making a little bit more money than that. <laughs> Here's a 3v2. Tanner, right wing. Karras will wait for it off the boards on high Marinero. He scores! Uh, Hector shoot him down tonight. Marinero's second goal of the game. Here's the replay. All right, can this guy finish? Malia did everything he could to get from one side to the other. He had to respect Karich on the near post. And you know who got the assist on that one? The Z-Man. Soren Karich. Karich with a two-point goal and five assists. Seven points. Marinero with two points. Four points this evening. That's a 7-0 run for the crunch here. Uh, the Spirit has to do one of two things now. It's either settle the game down, slow the pace, and get it back running in their favor, or get the next goal. And they're going to have a restart. Tanner up with the ball. Good time to set up a three-pointer. Into the corner. Perry off the boards and hit a leg. Boardman, the rebound, almost tipped in by Marcano. Collect played it out the boards. Here's a two-on-one if Schweitzer can get to the ball. Johnson won that race. Now Baltimore needs to realize there's still a lot of time left in this game. They're only down four. If you would have told Dave McWilliams he would be down four going into the fourth before the game, he might have taken that. The Crunch's biggest quarter this year has been the third quarter. Outscoring opponents 41 to 26. They've added to that. There's a right footer over the crossbar. I don't think Hector's missed hit one tonight. <laughs> There's that little back heel between the legs again. You know, they used to call where if you took a dive, you could get two minutes. Boy, that, that you want to make it even rougher on the officials? They've got a tough enough job as it is. The foul called against Scott Schweitzer. Good look at the 23-year-old. 5'11", 150 pounds. He left his mark, Brad Smith, and stepped in. He has been the surprise of the season for the crunch. 
Whitman will leave it for Sloan. Sloan ran into the ref. He cut it off the boards. Yeah, that wasn't the pass he was looking no. for there. I think he was rushing because time was counting. Here is Carriage coming in against Morgan. Fichter said he tried to chip Malia, and Malia got his hands up. Good run by Zor, and here comes Smith out of his own end, and he bites the turf. Yeah, nice play that time by Malia to come out to the top of the box and cut down that angle. Brad Smith coming into this season. There, there you see him coming out. Smith had only two three-point goals coming into the year. He's already got three this year. Uh, he's firing from a little further out than normal. A lot of times if you're a target man like Smith, you don't get a chance to shoot from that foul. Good look at Brad. He had some offers to play big-time Division I football when he was in college. Matter of fact, his dad was an All-American football player at UCLA. We're just over two minutes here in the third quarter. Four-point lead for Cleveland. They have scored seven points in this quarter. There you see it. The crunch with the ball in white. Moving right to left. Left to right. The spirit in red. And the cynic along with Art Kramer here. Great balls of fire. Now we've seen a lot of fouls from behind today. Just those little chippy fouls from behind. And as the ball leaves play, we're going to take a break. The crunch on a run. They lead the spirit. 14-10. We'll be back. Well, Cleveland's always been known as a great sports town, but uh, that sign will tell you who the king is. Yeah, but what, what a knock on Mike Fratello, the czar. <laughs> He's done a great job with the Cavs. Hardgrove. Hardgrove. Baseball's out. Belichick's playing, you know, they're playing well. And Rick Banner's out of the Lumberjacks. I say put a circle with a line through it through those Cavs uniforms. Boy, have you seen those? <laughs> no, you know what? I haven't seen them yet. But it's a new era. They're playing at the new building here in Cleveland. A lot of improvements in this year. The Gund Arena. Minute 30 to play in the third quarter. Carrich tries to spin Johnson. I, I think our, you've mentioned it a couple of times. Johnson and Morgan have two different approaches to play in Zorin Carrich. And we'll get into that a bit more. Here's a counterattack. Otto played the angle while Perry on the rebound. Otto again. And he uh, knocks it out of play, giving them a restart. Yeah, that's good goalkeeping there by Otto, and a good play by his defender to get in behind him and cover. But you see Otto coming out to the top of the box. You saw a team up back in behind him. We talked about Dave McWilliams intensity. I think Otto's a bit into this game. 14 saves tonight. He's got to tuck that chain in, though. The restart will come at the top of the D. Marinero will be in the wall, along with Tommy Tanner, and uh, Zorn Karich is going to get a blue card. And, you know, that's five minutes. Five minutes the Z-Man will sit. If indeed it is Karich. Gary Campbell trying to explain things in the penalty area. Gary Hindley doesn't know uh, exactly what the call was or why it was called. Well, he's certainly seen it enough this year. Zoran, no stranger to the penalty box. He leads the league with 27 penalty minutes. I'll tell you one thing about Zoran, though, and in talking to Gary Hindley, he has made uh, one of the bigger efforts he has in his career to keep his temper in check. He kind of went off in the Canton game, and, and, and tonight he let it get away with well, him. But Zoran's done a, a better job than in the past. A minute 11 left here in the third quarter. Let's see what happens in this next five minutes of play with Z in the box. Misconduct is the penalty. There is no shootout. There is no shorthanded. Restart goals for Baltimore have come pretty well, but they're unable to convert here. 13-8, but chalk up about four tonight, yeah. at least for Cleveland. Under a minute to go in this quarter. The third. Tim Tima will drive a right footer in. Boardman, ooh. A soft touch with the head. Hopefully, Malia was expecting that. Oh, a great tackle by Carbonara. Tanner will lead the charge back right to left. Brad Smith went in. Tanner 
took a shot at him. The crunch must restart here. Oh, and now Smith's going to go for delay a game. It was a Cleveland restart. Smith played dumb, acted like he didn't know which way it was going. Well, the refs have been very consistent about that. They called a couple of them last week in the Buffalo-Baltimore game. And Smith's got to be careful. He doesn't get five. Smith is saying that the referee pointed in the direction that the spirit was going. Now you have... Shut up! Let's listen to exactly what he says. Well, there's the explanation. Got it? Get up on the board. You, know, you got to be careful, though, hitting the boards, Ed. Oh, I know. You, you, know, you punch the boards, all of a sudden your hands throb in. You kick the boards, your toes in. I broke my toe in a playoff series the same way. Oh, man. Let's see if that uh, gets taped before the end of the game. Well, Brad Smith thought the five seconds had elapsed that the crunch was allowed to restart it. And he said, he's saying the refs pointed in the direction they were attacking. Right. And... You wonder what Zoran said to get five minutes if Smith doesn't get five minutes there. Now the crunch will get a power play because that was an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty and not a misconduct. And the background, if you heard it, big girls don't cry. Kind of a shot at Brad Smith from the Cleveland State University Convocation Center. Got 14 seconds to go in the third quarter. A very bad boy on good track. Yep. Tanner tried to slide it into Schmetzer. Four seconds on the clock. Aaron Arrow's going to let this one slide. And there's the horn. The crunch with a 7 0 run in the third quarter. They have taken a four point lead over the Baltimore Spirit. We've got one quarter to play, and we'll be back for that after a break. The, the Crunch has won a, a few uh, division titles, only one championship, and there are lots of banners hanging around. Uh, they're not the Temptations, but uh, they're having much more fun. The uh, Canadian Football League will decide its champion Sunday, the 27th of November. You'll see it live on the deuce at 6 p.m. Baltimore's expansion team will tangle with the BC Lions. And what a surprise that Baltimore team has been this year. First year oh, I'm in the league. Team off. It's up. It's a battle. Yes. Take a look. I got that one. He beat me to it. Why I ought to. See that? He's an athlete. He, he can get to those balls. I can't. There they are. Looking in our direction again. He wins the ball. <laughs> Come on. I was a primary receiver. I'll, I'll remember that. You had me too tightly covered. Hey, no. He's going long. Oh, he's going long. Ah, uh, oh, dropped. Ah, you can't be fun at the old ballpark. You're going to go on a long. What? Did you watch the game today with Aaron McNair on ESPN? I did not see it. I was in transit. I'll tell you this. The big debate. Should he win the high? Should he? he had more time in that pocket. I don't know. 10 to 15 seconds every time he went back to pass. But he is a good one. That's a luxury. As we come back to the fourth corner, the crunch on the power play for the next minute. Tip and go, Matt Gary. Well, a great run by Gary across the front of the box to put himself in good position. Those are times before you just take a chance. Either you stay far post or look at him make the run back post. Lance Johnson couldn't get a left foot out. Watch this off the boards. Tanner just whacked it. Gary was there. Yeah. And you've got to make a decision. Do I stay back post or do I make the run into the box? You just got to hope it comes your way. But if you don't make the run, you've got no chance. Matt Gary with two goals tonight. That's worth one point. 
It was a power play goal. It should be 15-10 crunch. By the way, a correction on that penalty to Brad Smith. It was not unsportsmanlike conduct. It was for a delay of game. 17 seconds in, and the crunch now with a five-point lead. Here's Tim Whitman. He couldn't catch up to that pass to uh, one-time it. And just on that goal, Tommy Tanner, the forgotten man on that carriage marinero line. Tanner's sixth to sixth assist of the season, an 11 point. Gutierrez backtracking. And he plays it into space. Spencer tried to put it between the legs of Jason Dieter. The timing wasn't right. Here's Gary. Playing with some confidence. Yeah, no doubt. Good play to back it out of there. You're winning by five. Keep possession of the ball now. Harris Schmetzer on a move to the corner. Crunch will re-rack. Hey, smart play there by the defending champs. Make Baltimore come out and play you now. Oh, well, we got a chance here. Want to say hello to Denver Forster, the father of Drew Forster, the Baltimore Spirit GM. Denver is back home today after open heart surgery, and uh, we're glad he's feeling well and back watching the NPSL on ESPN2. Here come the crunch ahead. Marinero, he hit the underside of the crossbar. And here comes Baltimore, two against one. John Perry curls one, a diving stop by Orr to the far side. All right, these two teams have been going at it all game long in one of the better games we've seen this season. And Cleveland, boy, really has the momentum in the second half. 9-0 run now for the crunch here in the second half. You know, I, I think any time you get a Baltimore-Cleveland hookup, it, it's going to be this type of a crowd-pleasing match just because of the, the history that they've had and, and the talent level on both sides. Yeah, we said Baltimore wanted to keep the score in the low numbers. Cleveland averages 22 points per game at home. Perry tried the same play that Tanner did on the last goal, but it didn't get through. Here is Sloan, a bouncing ball. Otto stopped it, and the ball bounces right into his midst. This is Tim Sarambides, one of the young players on the crunch that has filled in so well to help them to a 6-1 record. Tanner ahead. It's a three against four rush. Marinero tried to one-time it. Swing and a miss. One of the few that he's had. Good move by Smith. He has a step. Schweitzer recovers. He'll play it in to Morgan. Now an opening stitch. He ran into oh, That's a handball. You know, and that should be a blue card. Intentional handball. As Stitz had a wide open opportunity. Watch this again. Jimmy, stay where you are. Well, you could say it was incidental. Tima got a uh, bit in the mouth there, so uh, that's going to slow things down for just a bit. Give both sides a chance to take a break as crunch trainer Manny Economos trots onto the field. Uh, Tim's had worse injuries in his 11-year career. Yeah, he's the all-time league leader in games played, block shots, penalty minutes. Now you see the hold that the Spirit has had on the crunch. Baltimore winning the last five. Last time the crunch won a game against Baltimore was the 92-93 season. And, uh, they have never met in the playoffs. Yeah, thank goodness. Yeah. I, for Cleveland for the Harrisburg Heat, who has knocked Baltimore out of the playoffs the last two seasons. Baltimore travels to Harrisburg on Sunday. And Cleveland at home against Canton. So if Baltimore loses here today, they could be looking to fall two or three games back in the standings. Restart for the Spirit in close. Marinero slipped the pass a bit and uh, forces the Spirit to re-rack. He holds off Chanta nicely. A left footer from long range missed. And the Spirit will get it back. Malia will go long. Picked off by Schweitzer. He tried to play an early ball from Marinero. That's going to fade off into the ear. Johnson there you see coming out of his own end to Chris Morgan. Smith with a move to goal. Renato came out and made the play. Good, good play by Smith to push off a little bit on that ball coming in. Give himself a little space. Looks like the Dallas Cowboy receivers. There's a little shove to give himself a little space. Nice trap. Uh, he and uh, Deep Spitz got their signals mixed up. And uh, foul call. 
against the Crunch. Yeah, Baltimore's got the three league leaders in fouls committed. Johnson, Stitz, and Derek Marcano. Gutierrez, there you see the ability Gutierrez has to hold off a much bigger man. He really makes up for the loss of Mark Thomas. Yeah. The ball dumped in. Gutierrez once again in that tangle with Johnson. The two going at it again. Gutierrez tried to flip it over his head and was taken down. It's going to be the toughest position, other than goalie, is that target man position. He kicked on a lot. It's one of the, I, I'm sure Lance Johnson was happy that it wasn't Soren Karic there. <laughs> a little bit of a break. Oh, Tal falls over the boards. You know, you give Bill Andraki, the backup keeper of the crutch, one job to keep that towel on top of the boards, and he can't handle that. Where's Mary Hart at? Is, <laughs> is it, isn't she supposed to be standing to uh, John Tesh's Tesh's right? Yeah, very strong resemblance there. <laughs> hey, Mary Hart certainly has the legs to play in this league, doesn't she? Yeah, a little bit better looking the team up. Here is out of war. That's going to stay in play. Now a tango. Kids wanted that one. I'll say. We got to get the net. Hang over the end of the boards. The intensity pick it up just a bit. Baltimore actually needs a run here. They're down five points. As these two teams tangle for first place in the American Division of the NPSL. And watch Lance Johnson come in here. Couple. Boom. You know, he's had his tangles with Carriage all game long. He's taking it out on somebody else. Take it out on the little guy. That's right. Ball goes out of play, and that gives us a chance to take a break. 10-14 to go. And the fourth, the Crunch still on a run and leading by five. We'll be back. My suggestion to you is order a pizza, get the popcorn machine going, because you've got a long night in front of your set here at the Deuce. It starts with college basketball, the great Alaskan shootout right after this game. Then you can get up and go to the fridge and come right back and see the best of talk to all here on the Deuce tonight. That's a good show, that talk to. I tried to call Neil Lomax the other night. I couldn't get through. Really? Didn't, didn't you tell him who you were? Well. <laughs> Or maybe it did. <laughs> Here come the crunch. Carrots put it between Johnson's legs, but Lance once again recovered to break up the play. And now uh, 4v3 developing for Baltimore. Perry cross carpet Marinero back in the defensive third Schweitzer. He just plays good positional defense. Now Carriage for the trailer Tanner. Tanner in, will make the run, doesn't get it back. Aaron Arrow in the carriage, tries to get a step on Johnson. The ball free, Perry slipped it off to Malia. Harrisburg and St. Louis playing this evening. They're tied, that's in the first quarter. They got a long way to go. As the crunch attacks, Marinero right footer just wide, and Carriage was just late. Well, he may have tried a diving header, but a little too close to the board.